All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I'm Sean. This is In The Mix, episode number four of our FC St. Pauli series. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. I hope wherever you're watching from in the world, you had a great weekend. It's Monday at the time of recording and the time that this episode will come out. And we're humming along nicely in our first season with St. Pauli in Hamburg. If you didn't watch out last week's episodes, go and check them out. They'll bring you up to speed on the team that we're playing, the tactics, which we've tweaked about 15 different times between the recording uh, and today but also get you introduced to the squad and kind of bring you up to date with what we're going to be doing over the next few seasons and how we're trying to develop this St. Pauli team a little bit further. We are, in this episode, going to close out the January transfer window as well. There's a couple of things that we've done, which I'll show you guys, of course. There's a couple of things that we're still going to try and do throughout the course of this episode and hopefully bring you guys as well. To really, I think, round out the squad and give us a bit more additional depth for the last six months of the season, the last half of the season, however you want to word it. And maybe if we make the right signings, we bring the right people in, they hit the ground running, maybe we can jump up the table a little bit as well. But let's jump in and see how we've gotten on. So first and foremost, as you guys can see, just above our head there, we're sitting in eighth spot in the Bundesliga 2 or the 2 Bundesliga or whatever you want to call it. We have, after 19 games, 8 wins, 6 draws and 5 defeats, 21 goals for, 18 against, plus 3 goal difference and 30 points. It is incredibly tight in and around this stage. There are only 3 points separating 4th position down to ninth position, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Like, I think the division itself is quite level in that mid-range, mid-table sort of area. There are, I think, a few sides that are proving to be far above and beyond the rest of the division, and that's Hanover and VFL Bochum. We are, given that we're through Christmas, at that point as well, where a few different managers have been sacked. So some of the teams that were potentially under underperforming have brought in new talent to lead them, and that might see them get a little bit better. For Fortuna Dusseldorf, one of those sides, Hamburg SV, one of those sides, they've both sacked their managers and moved up. There was a period where I was in the sack race, but thankfully I think I've gotten a handle on it now. And of course, we've had the winter break and everything, which I think came at a good time for us. Uh, of course, in yesterday's episode, or for, sorry, Friday's episode, Nuremberg and Hamburg were the two games we played, a draw and a win in that one. We then went on a pretty poor run in December, to be completely honest. We lost, oh sorry, we drew with Fortuna Dusseldorf, which was a good performance. We drew with Bochum at a time when they were doing very, very well. They scored a 91st minute equaliser, which was quite frustrating. I think that's really the first equaliser we've conceded playing like that cautious mentality and that possession-based style. But to be fair, they're a very good side. They had a good few half chances throughout the course of the match. Uh, we then lost to Paderborn 3-2 in a frustrating contest. Lewis Carbonell breaking a long-running goal drought for that one. VFL Osnabrück, we, drew, uh, we lost 2-1 to them in, again, another frustrating game. We took the lead in 57 minutes. They scored after 67 and 77 after not having a highlight at all or even a shot in the first half, which was a bit frustrating. Uh, we then had a couple of friendlies, Galatasaray, Brasic Das and Ajax. No real concerns about any of those results. That was purely about getting hopefully good attendances to our ground and hopefully getting a bit of cash through the door if, as we play some larger reputation international sides. So not worried about those winter break friendlies. That's absolutely fine. And since we've come back from the winter break, we've had a 2-1 victory against Darmstadt 98, which I think is really good progression. If you remember back to the start of last week, our first game in the Bundesliga 2 season, we lost to them. 1-0. So good that we've been able to kind of turn it around, improve a little bit. And then a 2-1 victory again against Eintracht Braunschweig. They haven't performed particularly well. I think when we played them, they'd lost five in a row. So it would have maybe been good to, in that game, win like 3-0, 4-0, because we haven't really had a victory like that. The Karlsruhe 3-1 victory is, oh, 3-0 victory, sorry, is still our biggest result of the season. There's no one that we've really like torched at any point. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. We are still undefeated. Two straight wins to start the second half of the season or, you know, after the winter break, which I think might have kind of helped revigorate some of our squad, a very young team. Getting them a break, getting them the additional challenge of playing some of the bigger sides in Europe in those friendly contests, I think that's helped us quite a bit hit the ground running at the lower level in the Bundesliga too. We have also got two new faces that have joined us. You knew about one last episode, but we've added another in Niccolo Armini. Now, full disclosure, he was a fantastic wonder kid and a free transfer you could get right at the start of saves in FM20. So I knew who he was. He was kind of on my radar already. And then the opportunity came up to get him for relatively cheap. For whatever reason, Lazio, he'd signed a new contract, but then they'd put him on the transfer transfer list for 500k actually no sorry apologies I think it was for about two and a half million or something like that we offered 500k and then a million over three years to get him to bring him in and he comes to us as a fantastic player he can already play as a ball playing defender pretty comfortably he can be central defender he can be a libero if we ever go to like a three at the back system or something like that very very solid technical attributes good passing as well at 11 not too shabby at all very good, I think, mental attribute. 17 determination. It'll be interesting to see how he evolves and continues as a player. And physically, already very, very good as well. So we're going effectively from having a back 
two or sorry, centre back partnership where we weren't quite sure on where it was sat with, I think, a very clear starting central defensive partnership that potentially we could have for the next five, six years of this save and of this series. They're both 19. He and Bella Kochap are going to continue playing together. I'm not going to say he's hit the ground running in his two appearances for the club so far, 6.4 average rating across those two games. But at the same time, like we're going to work him into the side. It's not necessarily anyone that we need to come in and be immediately fantastic. We've got the depth. Max Norman Williamson is still there and still has relatively high potential at 17. We've also got Bala, who's still playing for the Hungarian national side. It's probably the one position I'm the most happy with, our central defensive options. And I think we've brought in someone of equal quality to Bella Kocsap, who had been, I think, our star performer at the back for quite a while, as far as the season is concerned. The other signing, which you guys already knew about, is Matthias Arezzo. Now, we signed him quite a while ago. We had to wait for him to turn 18 and then wait for a transfer window for him to come across. 2.5 million. We paid, I think, a million of that up front and 1.5 over the next three years, which is an absolute steal for a player of this quality. If you've been around Football Manager for the last couple of cycles, you know this name because he comes up every single year as being a fantastic player already fantastic at a variety of areas at 18 years of age which is brilliant for us he's our highest paid player on 15k a week but an excellent finisher pretty decent uh, mental attributes as well also 15 determination it'll be interesting to see how high he actually gets in terms of his potential ability and physical attributes absolutely fantastic as well can play as an advanced forward can play as a pressing forward or a poacher can do some other fancy roles like a false nine or a trek or tista or deep line forward so there's great versatility in what he's going to bring to the side and while also he hasn't started particularly well, his first two appearances for the club since signing, I do want to continue to give him time and continue working him into the lineup and into the squad as well. And I think it also takes the pressure off Carbonell quite a bit. We didn't really have that depth where if Carbonell wasn't playing well, we could take him off and bring someone on that was equal quality or as likely to score. Now we've got that. We've got effectively four central defenders that I think are going to be fantastic. We've got two strikers who I'm very excited about and we may potentially see in the squad and in the lineup for the entirety of this series as it runs its course all the way through into January. I'm thrilled to have him. Those are the two that I think we set out to get. It does give us a better balance as well. Like we've got a good four players up on the starting lineup now with four star current ability. We've got a couple of three and a half stars in there, a few two and a half, three, few threes, but we are working on a couple more transfers. The first of which I'm going to show you guys now. Ezekiel Zabalos. Now he's only a loan signing. We are full disclosure out of cash pretty much. So really all we have available to do now is a uh, work through our wage budget that's available and potentially bring in some of these loan signings. As far as our shortlist is concerned, you can see there's a few players that are starting to go on loan list if they've signed professional terms, if they've signed contracts that, you know, we can afford in its current state. But, you know, like we can't afford the cash to get a transfer for them or get, you know, the funds together to make a bid that would be acceptable for that club. I think if we tried to make a bid on Zebulas, they'd want like 8 million euro for him and we just don't have that cash at the moment. Maybe next year if we get a refreshed transfer budget, maybe if we go up a division and get the influx of cash that will come with Bundesliga TV rights, he's someone we could bring in. But if we bring him in now on loan, hopefully he'll enjoy his time at the club. Hopefully we can renew that loan for next season if he does very well. And I think he's going to be fantastic for us. Inverted wing on the left-hand side, absolutely brilliant. Dash has been arguably our best player, but what we need is that additional depth. So can we bring Zebulos on in games and have him run at tired defenses? A lot of people have been mentioning in Football Manager this year that you kind of need to have two players in certain positions if it's a very exhausting position. We've seen that with the fullbacks. We have had to rotate quite a bit through those positions. We'll talk about the fullback options in a moment as well. I think it's the same for the wingers. I think Dash has done very well, but what we need is someone that can also contribute in that role in that position. And if he does well, I wouldn't have any drama really with putting him as an inverted winger on the other side, giving us a little bit more depth or a little bit more quality comparatively with the likes of Dion McGee, with the likes of Maury Bamba. So Ezekiel Palacios is going to join on loan. That's the first one. We've got another two loan bids in, just hopefully strength the overall quality of the squad. You may have already seen them flash up a second ago, but the first one is Luca Nets, 17-year-old German from Hertha BSC under 19s. He is on the loan list. There's a few clubs that want him, including Hamburger. I don't think in his current state, he's as good as Juan Rodriguez, but he's young, he's German, he fits kind of the mold of what we want to try and build in and around this side. If we bring him in, he's going to offer additional depth for us. Even if he doesn't start every game, we'll at least get him involved in the squad. We'll at least get him coming off the bench. We'll at least get him rotated into games where we think we're going to do well or we think we're going to win. And thankfully, the bid that we've put in for loan it doesn't cost us a tremendous amount of money. 3.2K a week, which is fine. That's just paying his wages at the moment. If he does well, I don't see any reason why we couldn't extend it. If he does really well, I don't see any reason why we couldn't put a bid in for him once we have that transfer stuff available. 
And of course, young German player, we want to try and get a few young German players in and around the core of this side. We don't want to rely too much on just raiding Santos, which brings us to the next player, Sandri, who we're going to have a look at here. Defensive midfielder, I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. Can play as a segundo volante, can play as a deep line playmaker on defend. What I think bringing him across will allow us to do would start him at the number six position and push Finn Becker a little bit further forward. We have made a signing for the future to try and sort out that midfield three, but we haven't quite gotten... I think, a good balance in this midfield three. Becker's excellent and has done really well. He can also play a little bit further forward as the box-to-box -box and be quite good. He can play as a Mazala and also be quite good, giving Gibua a chance to you know work in his preferred role. But then Arimu, I don't think, is quite the quality that we need him to be anchoring that midfield. So maybe Sandri comes in in that spot and we give Becker a role further up the pitch. Uriate is probably the other big question mark there. I don't think he's been bad by any stretch, but I think... At 18 years of age, being Spanish, not being comfortable in the role, we need to give him a bit more time to develop his understanding of that Mazala position before we want him to do it consistently throughout the course of a season. 6.72 average rating across his 19 appearances, including three sub appearances, isn't the worst in the world. But if we want to push up the table, if we want to be challenging for promotion, if we want to be challenging for title positions, we probably need to bring someone in with a little bit more quality. And I think, I think, I could be wrong, I think Sandri will offer that for us. And he's one of about six different players from the Santos Academy that we've got uh, on our shortlist at the moment that we're keeping an eye on. Other targets, we put a bid in for Alex Blesser, who looked like he was going to be a handy little central midfielder, another Spanish player, another lefty in there as well. But we just can't afford him at the moment. It ended up being between him and Armini, and they wanted ridiculous cash for him. I don't think he's that big a step up on what potentially we could have brought in. Uh, Cow George, or Kyo George, I'm not sure how you pronounce this one. By all means, let me know in the comment section below. Another player that we looked at, maybe this would have seen assigning him and bringing someone into play like in a two up top style and a different shape and formation but we just can't afford him at the moment we can get them to accept in a bid for him they've got uh, him on sale for 9.5 million euros we can bid a million euros and then three over the next three years but he doesn't want to talk to us yet so that's one that we'll keep an eye on as well we do also have two for the future at the same time uh, Renier you guys already know about I've showed him you to him a couple of times his transfer sorted for this offseason, so he's definitely going to join us during the winter window. But the other one is Omer Biaz. Shout out to FM Trek, who had a fantastic save last season in FM20 with Fenerbahce, and this guy was his star player. And somehow, I don't know how, we've managed to pick him up on a free transfer. He will sign at the end of his current contract, which is actually up in... August, so it might be a little bit later in the transfer window, but he'll come across on a free transfer. Already looks fantastic, can play at the 10, can play a little bit deeper. We'll get him working as a Messiah or as a deep line playmaker or an advanced playmaker if we do any tactical tweaks. I think he's absolutely fantastic for us. No compensation. So a free transfer for a player of this quality with this high level of potential, absolutely fantastic. And even if he joined today, he would be at the number 10 position, our third best option at the central midfield area he'd be in the top five that we've already got at the squad so thrilled to be having him coming across and joining even more thrilled that it hasn't cost us anything that is absolutely perfect now back to the competition that it is very very tight i've already mentioned that there's only a couple of points separating quite a few of the sides in and around this level of the competition we're going to be playing two of those sides in today's episode which is going to be absolutely huge first we've got heidenheim we're going to play them at home they're in fifth spot if we beat them we will leapfrog them and potentially a couple of other sides if results go our way and then we've got greta firth who are currently six points ahead of us they're in third position away from home which is a very interesting contest because we actually beat them pretty comfortably in the last game that we played against them. So it might be that we match up well tactically against them. I am desperate to keep a good run of form going. We are also tactically kind of switching depending on who we're playing, depending where we're playing between our three settings, our attacking structure, our more possession-based structure, and then our positive structure. I think for this first game, we're going to go with the positive structure from the off, and then we will adjust and change depending on how Heidenheim play and how we think the game is going. It'll be interesting to see if Zebulos is fully fit and if we can work him straight into the starting lineup. If we can, we will, of course, do that. Magic of editing, though, we're going to jump forward to the game against Heidenheim, unless one of those loan signings comes through, and then I'll bring you guys back for the confirmation. All right, back a little bit early because Sandry has joined on loan, which is fantastic for us. We're going to accept that particular bid and bring him across. We'll see exactly how he's going to look. We're going to have to register him, of course, in the squad itself. So we'll do that squad registration now. We're also going to assign him a squad number. He can wear the number 15, which has been freed up. Perfect. And we're going to give Becker a bit of love. We're going to put his our arm around him. We're going to say, can you please welcome him to the club? Because if they can get a good rapport going at the base midfield, it will be huge for us. I'm going to take Arimo out of the lineup. We're going to put Sandri straight in there. Zebulos, we're going to get him on the bench for sure. I don't think he'll start the first game. Potentially he starts the first game. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do as far as he's concerned. You know what? Let's get wild. Let's put Dashner over on the right as a Ram deter because I really want to see how that role goes in FN this year. And then let's bring on 
Zebulos on the left wing and play him as an inverted winger on support. Just a bit of a role reversal from those two sides, and it is getting away from that uh, advanced playmaker that we have been using over the last month or so. But it's a German side in Germany. Let's get that Ram Deter going for each of our roles. And looking at our squad view, that is already much improved. Another four-star player coming straight into the lineup. Zebulos at three and a half star. We are improving the overall quality of this squad with each and every signing. And that does take us pretty much straight into the game against Heidenheim as well. So we're going to go with low sass in goal. Bella Kochap and Amini continuing to work their defensive partnership at central defense. Rodriguez is the left wing back. Weekoff is currently playing at the right wing back role just because he's a bit upset and we promised to give him some playing time. So he might play throughout January and then we will work Gundeland back into the starting lineup. It's actually worked out well because Gundeland has had a knock during that time. So perfect timing as far as that's concerned. Sandri will make his debut anchoring midfield. He's not 100% ready to go. And I wonder if maybe we change his role. What can he do best? I'm going to mix it up. We're going to give this halfback role a whirl. I just want to see how it goes. I think maybe we need someone a little bit more defensive in that role rather than the DLP. So let's just go halfback on defend. And let's potentially see how that works and how that looks. We're also going to amend his training just to include that halfback role. It does look like he can fill pretty much any of those defensive roles, which is absolutely perfect for our tactic as we continue trying to figure out what actually works within Football Manager this year. But Sandri at the base, Gyabua and Becker as the two midfielders further ahead of him. Zebulos making his debut on the left-hand side, Dashner on the right, and Arezo leading the line up top. Arezo still hasn't scored for us yet. Maybe in today's episode we'll get the first goals from him, and hopefully it's the start of a fantastic career for the little Uruguayan up top. They're telling us to show Dennis Burnich onto his weaker foot, so he might be a danger player that we have to keep an eye on. Pump Fist, we're going to say, great opportunity to show them Pundits, they're right to back you up, and everyone seems motivated, which is uh, absolutely perfect. I don't know why. I think it actually came up that we're going to show the critics they're wrong. We're not doing that badly. And you see, last six matches, we've had a draw, two defeats, and two wins. Those were in friendlies, though. Heidenheim, they have won three of their last five. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. If you remember back to FM20, every big club played a 4-2-3-1. Not the Heidenheim huge, but by any stretch. It should be an interesting one. One point ahead of us going into this game and plus three goal difference. If we get a good performance here, this could be huge in the overall makeup and build of the run home in this season. And as we always do, we'll give it until like a half an hour and we'll try and pull a shout out. We'll give it to the hour mark before we look at subs or anything like that. We are going to keep an eye on those new players, Armini, Sandri, Zebulos, and Arezo. We can sub them all. I forget every week that we actually have more subs than the usual three in the two Bundesliga. I think we could do four or potentially five. So ball out wide here, Musiala. Cuts it back, and it's a great save there from Lossas. It really should have done better, the defender, or sorry, the striker. Uh, he had the whole goal to aim at and thankfully put it straight at the keeper. He did quite well to get down to his right. But an early warning sign from Heidenheim. We know they're not a terrible team. We know they have done well in this division so far this year. And already looking like there's a bit of movement on the table. We stay in eighth, but the fifth, sixth, and seventh positions have all moved around just based on current results. We're through 30 minutes. We're going to hit a demand more shout. And we've immediately got a highlight here. It's saying Pulsar needs to be shut down, so we'll tell him to do it. Dashner finds Vikoff on the overlap. Good ball back across. Arezo's there, and it pinballs to Zebulos, who could have maybe potentially passed in the back of the empty net. He's shut down well by the defender. Put his body on the line to block that one. Sandry's not apparently doing very well. Looks like he's a bit exhausted, but that's okay. We're going to go into the dressing room. XG has us ahead at the moment, but I don't think either side's really had that many highlights. We've had five shots, one on target, and 48% possession. Heidenheim, five shots, three on target, 52%. Both sides having big chances to open the scoring. I'm going to thrash my arms and say, uh, point my finger and say I'm not happy with the performance out there. A few seem motivated, which is good. Tactically, do we need to make an adjustment? Let's just spend 15 minutes trying to keep the ball and see how we go. Sandry's not doing too well in terms of fitness, so we might make that sub at halftime a little bit earlier than what I'd like to do it, but we will get it working. Uriade comes in as Messiah. Becca reverts to the halfback role, or we'll book him back to the uh, deep line playmaker role, which is his preference. And for the other subs, we'll give it to the hour mark and then might make a couple more based on how we go. Looks like the possession tactic or possession adjustment is so far working. First highlight of the second half is a throw in our way. Rodriguez, Kibua tries to turn in midfield. It wasn't quite there. And they played a long ball forward for Otto. Right-hand side of the box. He's got a lot of angle to work with. And thankfully, he's just put that one onto the post. Vikoff will keep it in on the far side. So there is that danger there about committing too many men forward and potentially leaving space in behind. Let's go attacking. Last 30 minutes. Let's go down swinging. This is always our philosophy. If we're going to go down, let's uh, at least go down trying to win the game. You can see one Rodriguez hasn't had the best game. We might take him off. And bring on the finger. Arezo's struggled as well. We'll bring on Carbonell. See if he can be a bit of a hero. We're going to, in praise, tell them that pressure's off. And still no one responds to anything. I cannot get those pre-gamer or those substitute talks to work. 
going to hit Demand more because it's the only, I think, shootout that works in this year's version of the game. And the draw doesn't kill us by any stretch, but it doesn't put us in the best position either. We've got a deep throw in here on the right-hand side. Vikoff to Armini. Vikoff again into Uriade. Now Becker, base in midfield. Work this down the right-hand side where we've got numbers. Good ball in behind for Carbonell. Wide right area. Can he find the finish? Oh, it's not a bad effort. He was actually closed down well, I think, by the trailing defender there. who got a foot on it to put it out for the corner. Uriade on his left foot to try and take this one. Wraps it towards back post. Carbonell was in there, but it's cleared away. Zebulos, who's not been super busy. We haven't seen much of the young man from Argentina. He was goal side then, but we don't get to see it. We're going to hit pause. Let's make some more changes. Zebulos hasn't done badly, but we'll bring on Maury Bamba just to try and give us a little bit more on that side. We'll set him to be a winger on attack. And is there anyone that's absolutely like dying in terms of conditioning? Giabua hasn't played particularly well or doesn't have much left in the tank. Vikoff also doesn't have much left. We'll bring on Gundeland. Can I make one more sub or have I run out? I think I've run out. So Gibur can try and continue to get through the match. He's actually not playing terribly. 6.7 is not the worst result in the world for him. I have faith in you and none of them care. So again, just cannot seem to get anyone to react to anything. We're going to hit demand more. And let's see what we can do for the last few minutes. They're saying that we've got to get Bella Kochap and there's another player there that they said we have to mark a bit tighter. Three minutes of additional time to be added on. And we're through that now. Nil all draw doesn't kill us, but it does feel like a missed opportunity. Our defense has done quite well for us. Bella Kochap, Armini, and Lossas, all the best rated players that we've had. Finger did well. Our midfield rotation didn't quite work out the way that we wanted it to. Sandra did well, actually, you know, on his debut. 6.9, the best of the midfield pairing. Arezo still struggling to settle a little bit. We had the higher XG total, but nine shots, three on target, 44% possession for St. Pauli. 10 shots, five on target, 56% of the ball for Heidenheim. I'm going to say not happy with your performance, and if most have responded positively, Zebulos looks a little bit nervous, but I guess that's just his debut and his first appearance for the club. We do stay in eighth position, though. Uh, Versberger kickers are ahead of us on goal difference. Osnabrück and Heidenheim still one point ahead, and Regensburg, they must have lost their game. Thankfully, they don't go too far ahead. A win against Greta Firth could potentially see us move up as high as fourth position, which would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, Magic of editing, though, we're going to jump forward to the second game, unless we have confirmations of different transfers, and then we will jump forward to those. Uh, jumping forward a couple of days because we've got another loan signing joining. Um, first thing that's come up is Gundeland is apparently progressing really well. Great to see him move to three and a half star current ability. That's fantastic. We might get him back starting for the next match. If we get about Vikoff, he can just uh, deal with it. Juan Rodriguez at the same time is both not in good form, so we've criticized that to try and pick him up a little bit. And Luca Nets is joining a left back in his position, which is going to give us some fantastic depth. It may also be due to suspension that Juan Rodriguez doesn't play in the next game. But that's probably more coincidental than anything else. I think we'll put Gundeland in at right back. And Rodriguez, we're going to leave out of the side. We will get the new signing, Luca Nets, in to the starting lineup for the next match. We'll get him registered. And he qualifies as homegrown talent, which is fantastic. Give him a number. 22 is available. That looks perfect. And then we'll also go put our arm around Finn Becker and ask him to introduce him to the rest of the squad, which works out perfectly for us. This time, Magic Editing will jump forward to the game against Greta Firth. All right, jumping forward. So those couple of changes that we spoke about, Nets is going to come in for his debut. Gundeland will come back in at right wing back. So two changes in the right wing back spots. Nets, only two, heart, two star current ability, but I think he's got very good physical attributes and I think we need to kind of rotate a little bit just to stop everyone getting complacent. So hopefully Rodriguez is suspension and the fact that he hasn't played particularly well over the last five games uh, is the perfect platform for Nets to come in and do quite well. But a very different lineup, even to the one that we had like two or three games ago with the additions that we've made in this January window. Hopefully we can start hitting a good run of form and start picking up some points. We are going to move to our possession-based instruction, which starts on cautious. It's a little bit shorter of passing, a little bit uh, deeper in terms of where we press the ball as well. And hopefully... That means that we can get a good result. We are playing, of course, the third place side in the division away from home. We do want to have more of a cautious mentality heading into that game. Hard to tell from their lineup exactly what shape they're playing, but we're going to go in here. We're going to say pump fist. We're underdogs. That suits us down to the ground. Nobody particularly cares. So let's tell the defenders we've got faith in them. Let's tell the midfield we've got faith in them. Let's tell the attackers we've got faith in them. And a couple of players now seem motivated, which is good. Sandry looked a little bit nervous. We'll have to keep an eye on that as this season progresses. But Greta Firth, they're playing a 4-1-4-1. They've won three of their last five, which isn't terrible. Uh, we've now won two of our last five, which isn't terrible. Those two losses, of course, in uh, pre-season friendlies or winter break friendlies, which is fine with us. And you can see that separation starting to come through. So a bit of a gap now to Nuremberg just behind us, five points behind. But we want to try and get ahead of some of these other teams sitting around 31 points. It's an important part of the year, and we're really setting up kind of, you know, like the run home in the last few episodes of this week and this season. 
First highlight though, starts with Greta Firth. They've got an overlapping run, but it's a good crossfield switch and a great goal, it must be said. David Ram with the finish there, seventh goal of the season for him. We'll check this one out in three dimensions. It was a great ball and a great first time finish. Can't even really complain about it. Throwing routine here, I thought maybe the way they'd work this triangle where Nielsen gets it here and the overlapping fullback just flies forward. Instead, they've gone the crossfield switch and Ram, back stick, rifles that one back across Lossas. Hard to be too upset with anyone. The defense was all in good position. It's just a very good finish and a very good ball. But maybe we can use a demand more shout. And maybe given that we've already fallen behind to an early goal. Actually, let's see how this highlight plays out. No, it's not a highlight. It's a, It came up because I clicked on tactics. I'm learning. I'm getting back used to it. I'm getting used to the game again. We're going to go positive a little bit here. Let's see if we can't pick up our intensity and our pace a little bit. And try and get some uh, chances of our own before we get to the half. Throw in right-hand side. Gundeland with the throw in. Finds Dashna in that Ram Deter role, which we haven't seen too much of. Becker now. Looks for the cut back towards Sandry, just sitting at the base midfield. Good switch. It's cut out well, though. Bella Kotchap doesn't get there first. Nielsen, who played that ball in for the first goal. Wide right area. Just stand him up, boys. Armini does push it back out. Gundeland with the clearance away. So there is a danger. They are getting, I think, 2v2 very quickly in transition. We're going to hit demand more here with about 10 minutes remaining in the first half. I don't know what other like things we can do in terms of shouts at the moment. I've completely lost my way from last year's version of the game. Nets, set piece, find Sandry short. Two new signings combining. Ball out there to Becker. Sandry again, back to Becker. Dashna had an overlapping fullback. Instead, he goes back to Sandry and it's a poor pass. And Nielsen again picks it up in a good area. Just stand him up, boys. Don't do anything silly. Wide right area. Ball back stick and he's found Ram again. It's that same connection. Nielsen's found Ram at back stick for both of their goals. And to be fair, it's like the third highlight where Nielsen's won the ball back and then carried it down that right-hand side for the opposition They're saying David Ram always press okay yeah that's probably a good note it's Nielsen that does the damage though and Ram's basically just had to get his technique right and tap these back in Gundelan got caught goal side but he took that throw in initially so that transition absolutely kills us and as we get towards half time we're gonna have to pull out the rocket a little bit here their XG is well beyond ours which I guess makes sense but it's not like they've created a whole bunch we just haven't created anything thrash arms far from pleased with what I saw from this team and then tactically we might as well go attacking Again, as we always say, if we're going down, we're going down swinging. Becker's not playing well. Losas not playing well. Dashton not playing well. Those are guys that have been in this squad now for a good six months of the season. Sandri, Armini, both on yellow cards. We'll have to be wary of that. Arezo, again, not playing particularly well. He's struggling to settle, I think, uh, in Hamburg. If we can turn it around, though, we can jump up pretty high in this list and in the table itself. But time is getting away from us here. We're already towards the hour mark, which isn't ideal. Gundeland finds Dashna. Gundeland on the overlap. Can he get a ball in? Towards back post, Zebulos was there. That was his chance. It got shut down well by Asta, the right fullback. But that might have been the chance to try and drag one back with half an hour remaining. Corner comes in again. It's cleared. Beckham might get the chance to put this back in. Gundelan's there with him. Instead, he goes all the way back to low sassing goal. The highlight continues, though. No, just as I said that, it's finished. And now Nets has picked up a knock, which is horrific. Sasha Volker will come on for him. On his debut, hasn't played particularly well. And it gets a knock. Arezo will come off. Carbonell will come on. Sandra will come off and Aremu will come on as the halfback. Let's give them a team talk. and Let's say uh, pressure's off tonight and Carbonell seems motivated, which is fantastic. Let's get him out there. And let's, can we also use a fire up shout? Let's just try that. Let's see what happens. We've got nothing to lose really at this point. 2-0 down away from home. And the clock is ticking away. We're into the last 10 minutes. Let's go one more sub up our sleeve. Let's just keep the ball for a bit, boys. Let's get possession going. Finn Becker's not played particularly well. Uriate can come on for him. Uh, faith in you. He seems motivated. Okay, so we finally got one. But did he was he motivated before I spoke to him or was he motivated after I spoke to him? I've got to pay more attention. Losas, deep goal kick. Looks out towards the right-hand side. Dashna is out there. It's a good header from Ari and B. One straight back over the top. Gundelan should get there first. And then somehow Nielsen got, nearly got the goal. Tried to chip Losas while he was on his line. And Losas made all sorts of issues with it. We're going to hit demand more as we head into four minutes of additional time. It's not been the greatest episode in terms of points. But I do think the overall depth of the squad has improved. Asta in possession here for Greta Firth. Now over to Jackal. Zebulos back to Ram. Aramu's right there with him. Good, well, good win back there by Armini. Armini and Sandri deserve credit. They're both... Uh, oh, actually, Sandri came off, but Armini's done well. He sat on a yellow card for quite a while. Sasha Volker, left back sub. Cuts inside one. Looks for the cut back towards Carbonell, who gets the strike away. It wasn't miles away. The keeper seemed pretty confident that it was going wide the whole time, though. And the referee calls full-time. It's not a fantastic result for us. A 2-0 defeat at an important time of the year. Volker did well, 7.1, the highest average rated player, even though he only played really the last 30 minutes. 
Carbonell struggled, Erezo struggled. Maybe we've got to have a look at that role that we're using up front because it just doesn't seem to be working for any of the players. I'm going to say I'm not happy and everyone seems motivated, which is a good response. Do stay in eighth spot, but ninth place, Fortuna Dusseldorf do get a little bit closer to us. We're thankfully not miles away still from those teams just above us. Versberger kickers one point ahead, Osnabrück and Regensburg two points ahead. If we get above them up into fifth spot, that's going to relieve so much pressure because we will be further ahead of that chasing pack, which will help us quite a bit. Injury worry for Nets, potentially serious injury. How long's he out for? Seven to 10 weeks, broken ribs on his debut. I'm going to put my arm around him and say, don't worry about your injury. And he's at least appreciative, but that doesn't help us all that much. And truth be told, there's not too much else we can do. If we look at our short list of the best young players out there in the world, is there anyone that we can bring in? Maybe we can bring in Cow George on loan. No, they want crazy money to actually get him across. We cannot afford that. And it doesn't look like anyone else is on the loan list. Manuel Ugarte has just agreed to sign for Sevilla, so we'll take him off it. He disappears. But maybe these are guys that we start, like, we'll scout them a little bit further. We might keep an eye on them, and then maybe these are people that we look at in the winter transfer window, try and bring across to make our overall squad a little bit stronger. But I'm pretty happy. Uh, you know, we've got a very high potential squad still. We've got a very young squad still. Oldest player is 22, Lucas Dashner. And I think we've improved our current ability as well. Sandry comes in and does quite well. Armini, Zebalos. All players that I think are ready for first-team football, which is basically what we're aiming for at the start of the transfer window. Bring more players in that are ready to be playing at the highest possible levels. Looking forward in our schedule, we might have a bit of a gap before we come back again. I'm thinking what we might do is jump forward the next eight games and come back and play the games against Nuremberg and Hamburger. We did play those two teams uh, early on. Actually, you know what? We might play Hamburger as a derby and then Fortuna Dusseldorf. We'll try and bring you guys as much of the run home as possible. We've also got... In that run, Bochum, who are top of the division, and then Paderborn, who beat us previously, and Osnabrück, who I think they beat us as well. So Paderborn and Osnabrück, we lost back-to-back -back before the winter break. That'll be a good revenge mission, and I think a really strong way to try and finish off the season. So it sets up our week nicely to kind of bring you guys the run home as far as the end of the year is concerned. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. The support on this series over the opening week or so has been absolutely fantastic. I do appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's put comments in the comment section below. Thanks to everyone who's updated me on their saves in FM21 and how they're enjoying the game so far. I appreciate it a tremendous amount, and I do respond to every single comment that I get. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, you can drop a like on this video. You can subscribe to be kept up to date on all of our future videos as they continue to release in this season and next year as well with our Pentagon Challenge. But more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching. That's the part that means most to me. As always, I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer.